rejoice ye in the Lord. And again I say, rejoice ye. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, <clears throat> cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts to beseech thee. coming did send thy messengers to prepare thy way before thee. Grant that the ministers and stewards of thy mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready thy way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at thy second coming to judge the world we may be found an acceptable people in thy sight, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Ever one God, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which thy Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life of mortal, through him who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, now and ever. Amen.
The epistle is written in the fourth chapter of the first epistle of blessed Paul the Apostle to the Corinthians, beginning at the first verse. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mystery of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards uh, that a man be found faithful, but with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. I know nothing against myself, yet I am not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. Here endeth the epistle. Thanks be to God. Show thyself, O Lord, now that sittest upon thy cherubim. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel is written in the <clears throat> 11th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the second verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now when John had heard in prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, <clears throat> Art thou he that should come? Or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The leopards are, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, <clears throat> What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken with the wind? But what did ye go out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But what ye went out for to see? A prophet. Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet, for it is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. Praise be to thee, O Christ.
seated. Good morning on this third Sunday in Advent, known as Gaudate Sunday. The Holy Mysteries are offered to the honor and glory of Almighty God in prayer that we may know the joy and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, as we prepare to celebrate again the joy of his birth among us. The Holy Eucharist we celebrate this week on Thursday at 10 a.m. The study group will meet on Thursday at 10.45 a.m. downstairs in the church hall. You will note the sign at the back that I put out a, a Christmas card table downstairs in the hall. It saves me finding Christmas cards all over the, ch all over the church. So, uh, and it saves all of you, if you so wish, the postage that keeps going up and up. In our cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Canada, the Canadian province of the traditional Anglican Church, for our bishops, for our clergy, lay readers, vestry members, and for all the faithful that God may continue to bless, guide, and prosper his church in this country. We remember in our prayers today the sick, the sorrowful, the suffering, the dying, commending to God's mercy and care, Sonia Archibald, Sandra Oz, Claude Haywood, Keith Illingworth, Jeff Shaw and his family, Beth Potter grieving the passing of her sister Kelly Quinn, Emily, Elizabeth Webb, Jenny, Jacqueline Bazette, Dan Blanche and family, Kate Potter and all who have desired our prayers and worthy as we are. We pray for Paul Nicholson, my godson, who will celebrate his 16th birthday on Wednesday. He went over on his annual birthday Canucks game last night with his father. They lost badly, but anyways, I won't let him forget that. So may God bless and guide him with his grace and mercy as his years increase as he turns 16. We continue our prayers for the end of Russia's war against Ukraine. We pray for the people, president, and armed forces of Ukraine, especially those facing the privations this winter caused by the Russian aggression, and for all the wounded, the displaced, and the dying. We remember in our prayers the men and women of His Majesty's Canadian Forces serving at home and abroad, for the men and women who serve as police officers, first responders, and health care providers across our land, praying God's blessing and protection upon them and their families. Finally, of your charity, I bid your prayers to the souls of the faithful departed, remembering especially those of our family, friends, benefactors, and fellow prisoners who have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, and all whose years mind occurs at this time. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today, as I said, we celebrate Gaudate Sunday. It is the Sunday of rejoicing. We get the title of this Sunday for the words of the introit, Gaudate in Domino Semper, Rejoice in the Lord Always. The church lays aside for this one Sunday in Advent the penitential color of purple, replacing it that with rose, signifying that the Lord is now close at hand. While the liturgy of the church throughout the season of Advent is one of expectation and preparation, both for the coming season of Christmas as well as for the second coming of Christ in glory, on this Gaudate Sunday, we are reminded in our prayers, our hymns, and our lessons that joy and gladness are the hallmarks of all who are called to wait for the Lord and seek his coming. We all have memories of joyful seasons past with family and friends. And while the joy and gladness with which we felt on those occasions are wonderful memories, the joy and gladness which we celebrate this holy season are more than a fleeting memory or a cherished family occasion. It is the joy and gladness we know deep within our hearts and souls as we celebrate again our Savior's advent in time and in glory. For some, though, this time of year can be tinged with sadness or anxiety. The memory of a loved one now gone, family many miles away, concerns over health or finances. To be sure, the joy of the season is still there, but it is touched with a little sadness, a little fear, perhaps some loneliness. 
As Christians, we are not immune from the realities of life. But as Christians, we know the joy and hope this season brings. The joy which is unique to those who know Jesus, believe on his promises. The hope that comes from his comforting words, be not anxious, I am always with you. Believe in God, believe in me, let not your heart be troubled. We have all been following the news over the past few months. There is certainly little joy in the face of Russia's war against the people of Ukraine. There is little comfort in the shootings, the killings, the injustices, the economic want which continue in our world. The tidings of great joy seem to have fallen upon deaf ears. Yet here we are on this third Sunday in Advent, preparing to celebrate again the birth of the one who is the Prince of Peace. We know, we know, we know we need the Lord's peace. The peace, as Jesus said, which the world cannot give. Yet the world has not grasped this fact. And so it is not surprising that people sometimes struggle to rejoice this time of year. Struggle to find peace of mind and heart and soul within the face of the realities of our time. Yet I believe that it is precisely in the face of these daily realities, whether personal or impacted by local or world events, that we are still able to rejoice, that we are still able to prepare our hearts for the coming of the Christ child, the Lord of glory. Advent is about renewing our relationship with God and making a path in our hearts and souls for his coming among us. As part of that renewal, it includes our questions, our pain, our sadness, our hurt, for all have a place in the life of faith. Leaf does not preclude bewilderment or sorrow or doubt or even fear, but neither does our pain, our questions, our sadness, our fear preclude Christian joy, true joy, the joy of Christ's abiding presence in our lives each and every day. With every question we ask, with every emotion we feel, with the thoughts that go through our minds as we watch the nightly news, we can still open our hearts to God, sometimes in doubt, sometimes in fear, but always, always with faith. We may well ask God from time to time the question, why? as we try to understand what's going on around us in our world and in our families. Yet as we ask that question, why, we do well to remember the words of St. Paul, which he wrote to the Philippians. In nothing be anxious, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Those words hold meaning for us today as they did for the church in Philippi some 2,000 years ago. In the face of our personal concerns, in the face of life's realities and the world's troubles, St. Paul is not telling us to forget what is happening or that it's all okay. What he is telling us is to pray, to believe, and not to be anxious as those without faith, those without Christ in their lives. He is telling us that in our prayer, in our faith, in our relationship with the Lord, we will find something unexplainable in the midst of the unimaginable. We will find Christ, the Lord of heaven and earth, and in Christ we will find peace, the peace which passes all understanding. With faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, we lit the third Advent candle. It is the candle for joy on this rejoicing Gaudate Sunday. We light this candle to remind us that we are waiting for Christ's light to break into the pain and violence of our world 
and to bring the joy that sometimes seems so elusive. We light this candle in anticipation of singing again that great Christian hymn, Joy to the World, the Lord is Come. On this third Sunday in Advent, as our hearts and minds turn again to Bethlehem, we stand at the junction of where pain and hope meet. We long for joy, we long for peace, we long for Christ. And in that longing, we sing again the ancient anthem of Advent, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Come, O Lord God, come and be with us. Give us the joy and peace of believing which passes all understanding and keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O Lord, thou art become gracious unto thy land. Thou hast turned away the captivity of Jacob. Brother, and pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable unto God the Father Almighty. Lord, 
Grant, we beseech thee, O Lord, that continual oblation of this our bounden duty and service may ever more avail for the fulfillment of the institution of this sacred mystery and for the accomplishment in all of us of the wondrous works of thy salvation. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and direct their governors and rulers, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Charles our King, and to all that are put in authority under him, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially to me, thine unworthy servant, and those bishops in communion with me, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Prosper, we pray thee, all those who proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with me heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those for whom our prayers are desired. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear. Beseeching thee to grant them a place of refreshment, light, and peace. And we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have glorified thee, chiefly the glorious and most blessed Virgin Mary, mother of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, the holy patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, St. John the Evangelist, and all thy saints beseeching thee to give us grace, that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow their good examples, and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> you that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors, <clears throat> and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw here with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them, that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, 
pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, this is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things, because Thou hast given salvation unto mankind through the coming of Thy well-beloved Son in great humility, and by Him will make all things new, when He shall come again in His glorious majesty to judge the world in righteousness. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify Thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying. Holy. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and at institute, and in his holy gospel, command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take heed, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we, thy humble servants, with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread of eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation the memorial which he hath commanded. 
and we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son jesus christ and through faith in his blood we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion and we pray that by the power of thy holy spirit all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction through jesus christ our lord by whom and with whom in the unity of the holy spirit all honor and glory be unto thee O Father, almighty, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. As our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, Son of God, by the will of the Father, and by faith, by the Ghost, thy God, which by life and the living, the living by this thy most sacred body, and by the law, and the goodness of the mighty evil, ever cleave unto thy commandment, and such a matter of the Lord of the partaking of thy body and by the Lord Jesus Christ, which I already visit to receive, and not to my judgment and condemnation, but that thy good and fail be forgiven and protection of the soul and body, who lives and reigns with the Father in me, and there is one God, the glory of the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. I receive the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy. Lord, I am not worthy. Say to them that are of a fearful heart.
Son of God. Behold him that taketh away the sin of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak word only, and my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak word only,
The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou didst graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, we beseech thee, and grant that the heavenly assistance of thy holy mysteries may so cleanse us from all our iniquities that we may be made ready worthily to keep thy coming festival. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Depart in peace. Thanks be to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From this time forth forevermore. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who hath made heaven and earth. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessings of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you, and remain with you always. <laughs>